Let's cover uh, the most interesting one that I mentioned to you. Hosea chapter 2, please. Hosea chapter 2. Let's talk about the three mothers. Let's talk about the three mothers. So let's start off with Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2. Hosea 2. So the first mother that we will see is Israel. The first mother we will see is Israel. So in the Bible, you're going to notice that there are going to be three particular mothers. And this is a study concerning women again. So you women, especially the mothers, would want to pay attention to this one. So the role of a mother is extremely important. Do you know why? It changed history. And I mean all of history. And you're going to see the key reason why. The key reason why you're going to realize it changes all of history is what is history the study of? The study of uh, man's story, right? Man would not exist had it not been for what? Because they were born from women. So the thing is this, is that when a mother gives birth, chi gives birth to children, you have no idea, mothers, you're changing history. Amen. Okay, that's how Sean, Tom, and I, sounds like Bible Baptist Church people online, all religions around the world, including atheists, that's why all lives have been changed. Because once the mother gives birth. So there's a lot of responsibility to the mother, you gotta understand. So let's talk about three particular events in history that we're going to see, okay? We're going to cover the Old Testament, dispensationalism, the church age, and then we're going to see the tribulation right here. And then after that, the end, which is going to be the 1,000-year millennium and eternity, all right? So... We're going to be, look how mothers affected all time, okay? First one is Israel. She was the first mother at the Old Testament. Hosea chapter 2, verse 2. Plead with your who? Mother. mother, plead. But what did God do with, now God was speaking to Jews, right? Right here. So this is obviously their nation, Israel, then. But what did God do? For she is not my wife, so God put her aside. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight. So notice right here that we don't deny that Israel has been put away by God. That's why throughout this time period, you'll notice that Israel is not the focus and the attention ever since the end of the Old Testament. Why? Because she was put away. But what did God promise with his wife? Look at verse 18. Notice the Bible says, And in that day, so future time period, will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. So when does God make this renewal with all of creation? The only time period is obviously not here, not here, definitely not here. It's right here, right? The millennium. So we see that once more. But keep reading, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. When does God end war once and for all? So we see it's not here at the Old Testament, here and here. It's right here. The Lord's getting ready over here. He's doing something with Israel later on. So what's going on? He restores them. Keep reading. Verse 19, and I will betroth thee. See that? He's going to renew that marriage. Unto me, how long? Forever. Forever. Okay. Well, no, we're the new Israel, says certain anti-Semites. Okay, you're the woman who's put away then? Yeah. <laughs> you're the woman who commits whoredom? You're that new Israel? Obviously not, right? So the one, you guys won't deny this, who's a nation that's been put away? Who's a nation that's been replaced? Who's a nation that forsook God? You anti-Semites are going to agree, you replacement theology people are going to agree, it's Israel. That's not the church, it's Israel. The one that's been put away, replaced, God says, I'm going to restore her in marriage again. You can't deny that. Amen. So here's the thing, is that 
this first mother we see right here has been attacked by what? Replacement theology. Let me ask you this, okay? If someone disgraced your wife, attacked your wife, criticized your wife, are you going to be you're going to be very happy about that? You're going to support those guys or are you going to be against those guys? You're going to be against those guys. You attack God's wife that he put away, but he's going to restore. And you say, no, you're not going to be married back again to that husband. You're stopping this nation from getting married back to God again. Do you think God likes that? Okay, the next one right here. Let's go to Revelation 21 and Ephesians 5. Revelation 21 and Ephesians 5. This first mother changed history. Why? She wrote the Bible for you. Not only that, she's the one that caused time to change. All of started the majority of the first thousands of years of your history, the Old Testament. This one's a very significant mother right here and wife that you should be, you should use your head before you touch God's anointed, okay? Oh, but she's wicked, she's evil. I told you, we read the verse. God already knows that, so he put her away, okay? But he says that he's going to restore her later in the future, and we know which time period that is. We already discussed it. Here's another one that they're attacking, Revelation 21, verse 9. The Bible says, uh, 22, excuse, uh, not, uh, excuse me, why did I wrote 21, verse 9 right here? Uh... Yes, it's 21.9, I'm sorry. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Who is she? And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and show me that great city, the holy what? Jerusalem. Okay, that's the lamb's wife, Jerusalem. Now, who's the wife of Jesus Christ? in Ephesians 5, huh? That's the church, right? So we're not going to turn over there for time's sake. But we see Ephesians 5, that it's the church that's the bride of Jesus. Revelation 21 says the new Jerusalem is the bride of Jesus. That Why? Because the church is living in new Jerusalem, obviously. The Christian saints are living in new Jerusalem. That's why they're one and the same. But look at the book of Galatians now. The book of Galatians, chapter 4. She's our mother, you're going to find out. That heavenly Jerusalem is our mother. Look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians 4. And we will read verse, verse 26, 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the what? Mother, mother of us all. The above Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem, is the second mother. Now think about this, is that when Revelation 19, turn over there now, Revelation 19, Revelation 19, she's the wife, right? And when she's the wife, okay, what did God do with this wife? Okay, this wife put away, right? And then restored later on. This wife right here is going to be married to God the Son right here. This one over here is God the Father. Now, when he puts up this wife, right? That's what he says several times. Wife, wife, marriage. Look at Revelation 19. We already know who that is. That's the church, right? So Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. See that? So notice right here that the wife is made ready. That's God's wife. And God, he wants to marry his wife up in heaven. Amen? Amen. Who in their right mind would want to prolong that? Who in their right mind would want to hinder that? Who in their right mind would want to say, put the wedding at a different date? Don't get married yet. Don't pre-tribbers 
want the rapture to happen soon so that we can get married to Jesus Christ. But then post-tribbers and mid-tribbers, they would say, no, 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 don't do that. Put the rapture after that. We want to go through the tribulation first. Let's go through the tribulation first. I want the tribulation to happen first. Imagine that uh, God's wife told her husband, no, I don't want to get married yet. You know, how would the husband feel? See that? So who in their right mind would try to prolong that when the wife and the husband want to get married? Who in their right mind would disgrace that? That is mid-trib, post-tribulation doctrine. There are post-millennials, there are millennials, there are post-tribulation rapture people, mid-tribulation rapture people. Basically, anyone who doesn't believe that the church will be raptured before the tribulation. We believe we're going to be raptured before the tribulation. Why? Because we're going to be married to God up in Thank heaven. You, Jesus. Who in their right mind would want to put God's wife in Satan's world rather than in God's world? Who in their right mind would want, would want God's wife to go to Satan's world first? not God's world first. Shouldn't we want God's world first? Yeah, Who right. wants to be in Satan's domain and Satan's world first? White See that? So, <laughs> white beaters, there you go. Now let's look at Revelation 17. Revelation 17. Here's the third mother. In the tribulation. So you see, it shows that this mother, this wife, is not going to be here. This mother, this wife, is put away, right, until the future. This mother, this wife, she's up. Then who's going to be the mother and wife? It's the church. It's the church. It's not, yeah, you got the church. You got the wrong church. Look at Revelation 17 and verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the what? Mother, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. There, yeah, that's the church, all right, the Roman Catholic Church. That's what it is. So we see right here in the tribulation that this one is the Roman Catholic Church. It's Rome right here. Now, they would like to argue that it's not. It's, it's America. It's the USA, United States of America. If you look at verse 4, who's decked in purple and scarlet in Catholic rituals? Who has a golden cup in their hand? Look at verse uh, 18. Look at verse 18. Is America a city? Or is Rome, Vatican City it's called, a city that has political world power? Can you think of a city like that? That's, there's no other city you can fit except Rome. By the way... Another thing is verse 6. Who's responsible for the blood of martyrs? You have Fox's Book of Martyrs. What's yep. that about? Roman persecution. Only Roman persecution. That's right. Ever since early Rome, through the Catholic Church, Roman Catholic Church system. They would like to argue, oh no, that's future tribulation. But if you jump to chapter 18 and verse 20, come on. That is not future tribulation. That's undoubtedly Rome ever since the beginning of Rome till now. See, all of God's saints throughout time. So anyway, so we see right here the Roman Catholic Church, okay? We see that clearly right here that it's the Roman Catholic Church. Now, people who would want to make Babylon, Jerusalem, Israel, oh, 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 don't you think that's a disgrace to God's wife? Yep. You're calling God's wife Satan's wife, huh? Another thing right here, when God wants to show you the epitome, the prime example of an evil mother, who in their right mind would try to mask that and say that this mother church, and isn't she called mother church anyway by Roman Catholics? Amen. She's right. not that much of a threat. She's not that evil, not that powerful, uh, like some of these weird pre-trib Bible believers would think uh, that yeah. it's that it's the Catholic Church. No, it's the United States of America. Who in their right mind would want to make her not really that much of a threat when God's trying to warn you she is a threat right yeah. here? Who, who in their right mind would be so evil to mask it? That's the devil. Yeah. Some of you people may have been innocent victims to this, yeah. and you don't know about this kind of stuff. This is now the first time for you 
or you should think seriously that, you know, we're talking about God's marriage, God's wife here. And God wants to show the importance of motherhood. Now, here's another thing right here. Okay, so everything is restored right here. We see the mother's restored right here at the future tribulation. But now let's look at 1 Timothy 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, and we will read verse 2. So we see that mothers change all of history. I mean, look at the power of the Vatican, right? If you studied conspiracies, and I showed you several videos on that one, there's no doubt the Catholic Church is way on top. They're the prime elites above Rothschild and those guys, see? So the thing is this, is that you got to realize that truly mothers change all of history, see that? You know why? The key is why they change all of history is because of children, see? The children, the next generation. So you know why this study is so important? Why did you go through these three mothers? One, we saw how wrong doctrine can definitely uh, be dangerous to attack God's wife, the mother in the Bible. Number two, it also shows how powerful mothers can be when they change history. We saw that, right? All of history, all of dispensationalism, it changes. So do you realize how much power you mothers have when you give birth to children? When you give birth to one or two children, you got to realize this. It changes the whole world. Because what, where those two children are going to grow up is going to affect people around them and their lives and all the other mothers too. Now let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 2. The elder woman as what? Mothers. The younger as sisters with all purity. So notice right here that the Apostle Paul realized there's an important role for elderly women. Oh, I'm elderly and I can't do much for the Lord. I'm stuck in a nursing home. You elderly women are a blessing. You know what you can be? You can be mothers in the church. To us younger people, we could use and even to pastors, we could use those mother figures right there where they show love and compassion right. and they will Amen. say, I will pray for you. I mean, we need those kind of people. You got to realize this, pastors can sure use some of that. Amen. That's <laughs> it's true. really hard when they're by themselves and serving God. They could use an old woman that they're visiting at a nursing home center saying, Pastor, I pray, I just prayed for you this morning. Don't you know that that changes the history of his church where that pastor keeps on going and ministers to the people? Now look at 2 Timothy 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. You know how mothers change history? You wouldn't have gotten these two books in your Bible, 1 and 2 Timothy. Why? Because Timothy had a good mother. 2 Timothy 1 5. When I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. That's why Paul's confident, and I am persuaded that in thee also. See, he tells Timothy, I'm confident you're going to be a good person because I know you were raised right by your mom. And not only that, because she had a mom that raised her right too. Now let's look at Romans chapter 16 and verse 13. Romans chapter 16 and verse 13. Didn't you know it's very possible Paul had a mother too? You might say, what? Yeah, Paul may have had a mother in the church. That was a blessing to her, to him, excuse me. Uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 13. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and Rufus's mother, and what? Mine. Wow, that's a blessing. That can be a blessing. Is that possible? Well, yeah, because what did Jesus say? Uh, your mother and your brothers and sisters are here to meet you. And what did Jesus say? Who are my mother? Who's my brother and sister? And Jesus pointed to what? The saints. And he said, this is my mother. Behold, my mother, my brother, my sister. Now, here's the greatest honor. Look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. The greatest honor. You know why Catholics want to exalt Mary? You know why Satan wants to exalt Mary? Because he wants to rule in the honor and the role, the importance of her role in the Bible. 
she gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. What mother had a great honor like that? My goodness, right? Didn't that change all of history? Yes, sir, it did. <laughs> Bless God, we got saved. Amen. Look at Luke Amen. chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And we will read verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Look at verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, ain't that a blessing? That's an incredible blessing. But you know how Satan ruined that? Satan ruined that by putting her at an exaltation. Oh, uh, we're not saying that we worship her, Catholics argue. But here's the easy argument against that, is that they would like to call it exaltation of Mary, right? Why would they exalt her above Simon Peter? Why would they exalt her above the apostles and the pastors of the churches? When the Bible says, what? The woman is, what? Submissive, subservient to the man concerning the ministry. So when you put Mary, 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 how come I don't hear Peter often? How come I don't hear uh, James and John often? By the way, how come I don't hear Joseph often? I thought that the husband should be the authority figure in the household. But then you focus more on Mary? Do you know why God chose Mary? Because she was the most humble, submissive woman, not the exalted one. She was the most humble, submissive woman. And you got to realize this. That's why mothers are so prized and important. What God wants is a submissive. What God wants is an obedient. What God wants is a humble woman. Because you know who become the greatest, greatest champions in the Bible? Not the ones who are exalted and have the greatest authority. It's the one who are the servants. It's the ones, uh, those who are humble shall be exalted, as the Bible says. Okay, so that's why mothers are extremely important in the Bible. Oh, you know, I don't have that much of a role, that much authority. You know, I'm just a servant. What do you mean just a servant? Shouldn't that be the greatest honor? Amen. Shouldn't that be the greatest power in your life? What can you mothers do? Affect the children, please. Elderly women, you can have younger people that you can be like a spiritual mother figure to them. Mothers who bring, bring birth to children, give birth to children, you can sure, if you have three children, do you know how much three people can change a whole church service? And if you're a woman who is single and don't have any children at all, you know how much you can be like a mother figure to children in the church, in being a Sunday school That's teacher, good. In, good. Being a, in being a mother figure, when maybe those children who are dropped off the bus and maybe their mothers are drunks and their own physical mothers are slops and their own mothers abuse the children, why don't you women be the mother figure to those children in the church? And then maybe those children, they won't backslide, they won't go into drugs, they won't fall into the streets, they won't end up in college all messed up by the wicked education system. If we had some good mothers in the church, that raised some children right. Amen. Now, a lot of people, when they come to our summer camp, this is not to boast, but to convince you with something. When they came to our summer camp, a lot of the guest speakers said, you got really good kids here. Do you know why? Because a mother figure. My mom actually was the discipline figure with all the kids in the church, actually. They transformed definitely after that. You change history. And if you're not convinced, how, how can I minister to you if I had not a good godly mother? Amen. You know what Amen. she did That's with me right. when I was born? As soon as I was born, this teaching is really long right here. I never went this long before with women, but this is so important. My mother raised me up to God like Hannah. You know that? When, as soon as I was born. And she said, Lord, whatever you want to do with him, he's yours. Did not that change a little bit of history right here, right, and maybe your right, life man. too online. Thank you.